which is the stock of the day, which is aristocrat leisure, Rudy. So I think it's a good time to say what happened in 2023, what's going to happen in 2024, short-term, long-term um, investment prospect. <laughs> uh, let me start by saying that uh, I'm a, I'm a long-term shareholder mm -hmm. of aristocrat. Um, uh, have repeatedly made the decision while I um, sometimes uh, reduce my exposure to other stocks and portfolio. I don't think I've ever reduced to aristocrat. And, and if anyway, I mean, it has on occasion been one of my top three holdings. Um, I'm not sure whether it is today, but probably is. Um, we can have a long discussion about people who have, are very happy to own coal stocks or oil and gas and the likes, and then uh, can't have aristocrat because of ESG. Uh, considerations, but uh, that that discussion will will never be um, completed in this in this hour. Um, I use aristocrat on occasion as the ultimate proof that you don't have to be in small cap or micro cap space to have consistently high growth in a company. And aristocrat is a prime example, I think. Uh, top twenty stock in Australia. Um, ever since they had their disaster in Latin America, which is I think now fifteen or sixteen years ago. Um, the share price has performed excellently. Um, the, the, the underlying dynamics are uh, very profitable, I think. And if you ever wonder what, what makes Aristocrat such a great performer, it, um, it outspends the competition on investments. It continuously finds um, new growth areas. And it obviously has long moved beyond the pokies. It's now in online mm -hmm. gaming and real, real money, real money gaming, and all those names they put on it. Um, it does occasionally a, a, an acquisition that turns out well, and it's obviously um, a high growth engine, and it uh, just continues doing what it's doing. What it's doing um, is it ever the stock of today? In terms of, of share market attention and focus, probably not. Mm. But I like it that way. I mean, it never is in the bubble territory. It never gets. Uh, well, that yearly chart was quite, uh, quite no, consistent. And, and over multi years, it goes <laughs> like that. So I, I'm, I'm more than happy to have that sitting in my portfolio. And it just does what it does. And it goes up every year, but pretty much. And it's uh, an occasion. That's what just 41 56, would you buy it today or is it a hold? I'm more than happy to hold it here. Um, the up, there's still more upside. Um, the difficulty with a stock like Aristocrat is that it never gets really cheap and it never gets really, really expensive. So you just have to pick your level. I mean, you could buy it today, but I mean, the market is, is I mean, I, I looked yesterday, the market is already up 5% this month and it's mm. just adding every single day. Mm. At some stage, there will, there will some wind will come out of this, of mm -hmm. this market. Maybe then is when you, when you jump on stocks like aristocrat. Gotcha. Well, Philip, Rudy keeps dumping on small caps and you and I have a little bit of a soft <laughs> spot for small caps. I mean, aristocrat, are you getting a lot of growth here? Or do you just have to be so super patient for that growth? Look, I love small caps. I think next year is a year of the small cap. If you look at um, GST, mm -hmm. uh, GFC, mm -hmm. recession, boom, bust, small caps tend to outperform um, coming out of a call of depression. That's kind of what we're doing at the moment. Having said that, I also like companies with large moats. Um, Aristocrat has proven for over a decade it is very strong in what it does. My understanding is in, in North America it's about 40% market share of machines yeah. and they keep winning because if you're um, a large uh, gaming venue anywhere, particularly the largest market in North America, you will buy last year's winners. So as long as they can keep producing games at whim, chances are when they're up for renewal their customers will all will invest in more it trades like a gaming machine up down up down win loss win loss win loss but you you, you sit Ultimately there you, you sit, you sit yeah, there forever exactly. so, you sit there. so <laughs> yeah. it is a as genuine wins? yeah, yeah. Uh, but it grinds higher yeah. um it, it is not cheap it's on about 16 times consensus pe with 10 percent growth uh, eps growth forecast it's not expensive but it's not cheap so to it's be honest, I, I actually think that is comparable stocks with less of a ESG disadvantage would yeah. at least have it X amount of points higher in PE. Yeah. So I actually think it is actually cheap, but it will not get expensive because it of the, it of the ESG market. Yes. Yeah. Um, and as you, as you pointed earlier, they invest a lot in IT and their last mm -hmm. result, they flagged an increase in no. um, R&D spend. That typically, given the track record, means greater earnings growth going forward. So perhaps beyond year one, year two, year three, yeah. 
they might accelerate their growth. Uh, so it is a genuine bottom draw, uh, long-term hold, trade it, you know, hold yeah. it forever like Rudy does, trim it to margins uh, if it goes up. But I'm gonna call it a hold base because it looks, it's not screamingly cheap, oh. but it should hold up okay, regardless of market conditions next year. I think it'll, it'll turn it'll do so okay. Too. It can withstand recessions. Yeah. If they still come. So are we holding it? Hold, hold for me. Hold. There you go. Um, Brad, you're welcome. Anybody else out there who likes aristocrat leisure or would like to have, have an opinion on aristocrat leisure as we move toward this new year of trade? There you go. You're welcome.